Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We're moving on with our team of the year and we have moved on now to our right winger. We have Danny Grant as our left winger of the season. So we need a right winger and a striker to finish off our 11. So, Gary, we're going to bring it over to you and you can go through any honourable mentions and then ultimately your pick for the team of the year. Yeah, so this is one, well, I won't say I struggled with. I struggled to find uh, the candidates. For me, I had one standout player. A uh, player I suppose I considered in the position was Graham Burke. I know he doesn't really play in that position for, for Shamrock Rovers. He probably may as, plays more as one of a two up front. Uh, but I did, I did consider him in the position. Uh, I, I also probably did consider that you could play the likes of uh, Michael Duffy, except you could interchange because the person I've gone with actually did interchange quite a lot. And even though he's left the league, he made 13 appearances and, and he scored one goal. But for me, at times, he was the standout player, certainly Bo's standout player, and that's Chris Twardick, um, who uh, I think Bo's have really suffered actually since he left. But when himself and, and Danny Grant were playing together, uh, just Bowes looked unstoppable at times and they, they were really on fire. And Paul mentioned that that, that win over Dundalk in Daly Mount Park. And uh, I only watched that on the TV, but they were they were really impressive. And uh, for me, I, I think the, the right winger has to be Chris Twardick. Okay. Chair, do you want to give me uh, your honourable mentions and then your player then? Yeah, this is a tricky one. A bit like Gary, you could get kind of lured into kind of like chop and change and just to suit for players, but you have to kind of go out on predominantly who played in most of these positions. Just another player as well that Gary didn't touch on, I think it deserves uh, an honourable mention. It wasn't far away. It was John Martin of Waterford. Got four goals this season, a couple of crucial goals. Particularly, he got the ball rolling for John Sheridan with that winner in Talca Park. A bit annoyed myself because he was a former Pats Academy player and obviously now he's not with us anymore so it's a bit annoying to see someone uh, doing so well but look what could have been is for another day but um yeah i think at the end of the day i've also wanted to go with gary here as well chris uh chris tardek like again as i said like i could have maybe accommodated other players but you have to predominantly go with the player that played in this position he was frightening at times when he was in this league one goal three assists you touched on it uh paul there earlier that game against Bowles, the second game, or that game against Dundalk for Bowles, second game back in the season, he was frightening that night. And a couple of games before the lockdown, remember the Saigo game and the Shelburne game as well, he was very, very good to watch. And haven't really kind of followed his progress much in uh, Poland, but it would be interesting to see how he will get on at a higher level because he does look quite a good player. I would just disagree with Gary. So I don't think Bowles have suffered that badly since he's lost because I think promise I'm a share has come in. I've seen a lot of him because I've seen a lot of balls towards the end of the season. And he looks another very exciting, promising player. And I think in time, he will definitely develop into a top player of this league if he stays here, if he doesn't go on to other uh, pastures. But I'm also going to go with Chris Tardek as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul, Tierney, give us your honourable mentions, if you have any, and then your player of the year. It, it's a very tough one to call uh, this position as well, as we know and we've all struggled. Jerry mentioned John Martin. He's very good for Waterford and got a couple of goals, a couple of important goals for them when they were struggling. Um, but, I mean, for me, I have to agree with the lads again. Chris Twardek, uh, i seen him live once. He was brilliant that night against Sligo. Jerry mentioned the uh, game against Shells at Thalemont before the uh, before the lockdown. Brilliant that night as well as they beat them 2-0. Um, as Jer mentioned as well, I don't think Bowles struggled without him. I think Bowles kind of just fell away because of the class of Rovers ahead of them as well. And it was just maybe too much for them. I think of the good performances. Uh, when Bowles played well, Twardek and Danny Grant played well. And that's why the two of them are in my team. So Chris Twardek on the right wing. Yeah, I think I think with Twardek, I think people actually forget how good he actually was. I mean, I know he's there 13 games or whatever, but when he signed, I was talking about him earlier on the season as being, you know, he could have potentially been the player of the year if he had stayed around. You know, obviously Jack Burr was going to steal the headlines with, headlines with Rovers win the league, but he was definitely, he would have definitely been in the reckoning had he had stuck around. And I think, yeah, I'm, I, I'll go through a couple of honour managers and I'll come back to Twilight because I had, um, I thought Adam Hamill at Derry came back 
Leagues, or sorry, Council League of Ireland with Derry. Thought he done quite well when, when watching him. I know his stats probably don't back it up, but I watched him against Shells and he came off the bench and I thought he was really good. Uh, Kolovic as well for Dundalk, I have down there as well. Um, his first season and I, and everybody had been talking about him coming in. He's supposed to be just brilliant player, Serbian left footer. And you could see signs of his quality at times. I, I spoke about that that Bowes game. I think he whipped in a ball. And I can't. Remember. I think Michael Duffy actually got the header, um, in that game, and that brought it to two one just before half time. Another player who I thought was really going to kick on this season, and probably I thought was actually going to have a really really good season, was Dan Kelly at, at Dundalk. But ultimately he didn't, and he kind of fell away a bit. I at, at the start of the season, Vinnie Perth didn't really seem to fancy him, and he kept on getting this kind of so bro where he kept coming off the bench I know the season previous he was coming off the, the bench and scoring goals and affecting games and winning penalties and getting assists and stuff but this season he just seemed to fall fall away I and I know he's done a couple of good things in Europe he scored that goal didn't he to clinch the Europa League and stuff like that but ultimately over the course of the season in terms of the league he didn't have a great season yeah you could have I suppose Danny Grant kind of on the right as well and accommodate there. But I do think Twardek and Grant, when they played together, they caused teams so much trouble. And, you know, they even caused Rovers quite quite some trouble in that first game of the season. When I know Aaron Green scored that goal, but that game could have went either way that day, honestly. Um, I know I think Andy Lyons got sent off, but before that, it was very, very even. And I do think that Twardek, he, like, he deserved this move, obviously. But, I just really, really thought he was one of the standout players. I was going to put him down as signing of the season had he stayed for the full season, you know, but he didn't. And the 13 games, the effect he had in those 13 games, I think, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, he gets in. And, and look, we're agreeing on most players in most positions here because I suppose I, I, maybe we view f- football the same way. And it is a game of opinions. I know I keep Buckley in there, but I mean, that was. You know, they're very, very tight between the lads there. But, I mean, you can't really look past. There's not a whole lot of competition on that right wing either. And I know we spoke that off air. On that right wing position in the formation that we're going with. Because, yeah, Gary said you could ultimately try and squeeze Graham Burke in there. But Graham Burke, if we're looking at the formation that we're playing, Graham Burke wouldn't fit in the system because it's a 4-3-3. So, he wouldn't fit in there. He doesn't play on the right wing, although you could try and accommodate him on the left foot. But ultimately, I think Twardek had a better season. I know Graham Burke probably had more better in terms of goals and that he would have had a better season in terms of goals. But I do think Twardek had the bigger impact overall. And that's what we're looking at here. So I think fair enough. Uh, Chris Twardek, then right winger of the season. Yeah. Just another thing that you mentioned there, Paul. I totally agree with you as well with them being signed of the season. Because it's not like as if even when full signed up from Saigo, like people were rants and raving about this. Now I know a good few Saigo fans, I don't even think they touched on him being like the big loss. It was more like the Dante Leverocks at the backs and Romeo Parks. I know he's rejoined the club. They were the two players that they were raging. It's not like as if like, oh, it's, it's pretty much both you can almost say took a gamble on him. I know he's left, but it definitely paid off. 100%. And they would have got a fee for him as well. So uh, yeah. ultimately it worked out. You know, they got, a, they got a decent enough fee. He actually kind of went under the radar a little bit because um, we were... I think we were speaking last night on the show. I actually slipped my mind because they would have got a fee for Twardek, but they're probably not going to get a fee for Danny Grant. So at least they got something out of it, I suppose. They yeah. to go with the, the Matt Doherty money. It will be interesting to see who they go for or kind of reinvest in those positions because they've ultimately now lost their, their two wingers, basically, who you know helped them finish second. What will happen with Dan Mandreo? Because, again, he's someone that you would have thought would have been totally up there, there, thereabouts. In any of those positions, he could play right wing, left wing, striker, or just behind the striker, or he probably not, uh, as an attacking midfielder as well. He could play in all those positions, I'm sure, and, and do them really well. So it will be interesting to see next season if he's still there as well, and if he gets a run a game time. I was surprised why he didn't play. You know, after lockdown, he hardly played at all. So I don't know, was there a falling out there with Keith Long? Who knows, but... Uh, I think it would be interesting to see his next move and what happens with Bowles. But Chris Twardek, right winger of the season. We're going to move on to our striker now just to finish off our series. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Is there anyone that we've missed? And if there is, let us know in the comments and why you would have them in our team. Because that will happen. Is that People obviously religiously follow their clubs and there might be some that we missed who they've seen and, and think is really, really good. Um, yeah. 
Thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon.